You're listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, a place to learn about how to grow your business and stay ahead of the technological advances before they become mainstream. Welcome to our series, As the Gears Turn, hosted by two of Ingram Micro's SMB Alliance Council members, Devin Biddle and Patrick Cash. So Patrick, what's going on? Another podcast. Oh man, I tell you what, I'm I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, this will be good. Well, I look forward to most, but some I look forward to more so than others. And uh, this is going to be one that's a little bit near and dear to my heart. And uh, yeah, who are we? Uh, who are we chatting with today? Today, our episode, we're speaking with uh, John Paddock, the Meraki account manager for Ingram Micro, and Amy King, the Cisco distribution account manager for Ingram Micro. Guys, thanks so much for joining us and taking a few minutes to talk to us. Absolutely, we appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Excited to be back and and always excited to be talking Meraki with you folks. So let's let's dive right in. Awesome. Well, Meraki is pretty well known for firewalls, access points and switches, but you guys have been innovating in a lot of other areas as well that uh, some of our listeners may not be familiar with. And so let's introduce some of the other solutions that you guys have in the market today that partners might not be aware of. And we'll, we'll dig into a few of these a little deeper as we go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'll kind of kick off on that as as, as, as kind of the Meraki focused uh, person on the Ingram team here. Several years ago, Meraki uh, brought to market uh, our MV camera line, um, and that that's been an absolutely huge success for us. We're on our third generation of it now, um, so we've had a, a lot of opportunities to uh, really upgrade the technology on that. But we've gotten uh, so much uh, positive feedback from the Cisco side from our customers um, and having cloud managed cameras. Uh, in their environment, uh, that we've really leaned into it in a huge way and expanded that beyond just cameras. So now we've got a a full line of environmental sensors as well, from motion sensors to temperature, humidity, water leak, uh, you name it. Uh, so Meraki has gone from being uh, the provider that, that wants to be a single pane of glass to handle your network to the provider that wants to be a single pane of glass that can help manage your entire facility. And to, to kind of meet that challenge, we've actually segmented uh, our Meraki R&D team. So we've got a, a camera and sensors team that we're just kind of letting run wild, continue to innovate, and they're coming out with some amazing stuff. And then we've also split our sales and channels org as well uh, so that we can have the type of focus and support uh, for these two unique routes to market uh, for Meraki. So traditionally, Meraki... Enterprise networking geeks, we love to sell enterprise networking. But we've also got the IoT side now that is working increasingly with the Cisco IoT team to, to integrate with uh, solutions like DNA Spaces. And these type of solutions are, go so far beyond the networking room um, and are able to, to really save our customers so much time and, and money and energy in a lot of different ways that it's really become a huge growth area for us in the future, that it's, it's a huge focus for us. Amy, do you want to tell them a little bit about the the Cisco IoT side of the house and and how Meraki is working with them? Well, absolutely. I mean, if you look at IoT, I think the Cisco IoT side of the house is more of the really ruggedized industrial IoT, but also relies on some of the sensors that Meraki has and the cameras as well. And then Meraki side has kind of more of the carpeted side, although they do have cameras that work outside and integrate beautifully. But a lot around smart spaces and safe environments, a lot of really good use cases and an amazing ecosystem of additional vendors that we tie into for very specific things like retail and education as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, playing off the API system, I mean, uh, one of the coolest APIs I've seen on that front is, is we have one uh, called Basking that works both with uh, Cisco DNA spaces and Meraki. I mean, it, and it works best when they're all in the ecosystem together. Uh, but these guys were great at now and over the past couple of years, uh, allowing us to do things like contract tracing, uh, understanding everyone who's in the environment and what any kind of conditions are if, if, if someone comes in with a, a covid uh, diagnosis. Uh, what do we then do? How do we track where they were, who was around them to keep our workers safe? So really cool API technologies like that are just the tip of the iceberg. We've now got over 260 in the API ecosystem on the Meraki side alone, and even more on the Cisco DNA spaces side. So any kind of solution, whether it is contract tracing, whether it is building safety, uh, whether it is, is energy cost reduction, or just uh, workplace efficiency uh, to better map out your environment, uh, Cisco is able to deliver it with partnerships between DNA spaces and Meraki IoT. So let's jump down 
into the cybersecurity realm. So huge topic today. Cybersecurity is a you know top of mind for everybody. How does Meraki help in that battle of cybersecurity threats? Oh, I, we, we help quite a bit. I mean, we, we've got our MX line of, of firewalls. My best selling point for every Cisco device is always going to be the Cisco Talos team. Uh, quite frankly, this is a, a team of threat intelligence and, and data scientists that is the largest threat intelligence team on earth that we know of. I say I put that caveat on there because the NSA and the, the Chinese government don't produce statistics on what they do behind the scenes. Uh, but it is the largest threat intelligence team on earth uh, that we know of. Uh, 78% of traffic on the World Wide Web flows through a Cisco device at some point. So the type of data they have to work with on, on the type of threats out there is enormous. And so when you buy a Meraki security device, uh, you automatically get the backing with the advanced malware protection from the Cisco Talos team that is going to be taking insights from all over the World Wide Web and making sure that it's proactively protecting you against those type of threats out there. And that's never been more important. Um, in the first 12 months after COVID hit, uh, ransomware attacks were up over 600 percent on small and medium businesses, not just pipelines and movie studios, but small and medium businesses. Everyone's a target now. So great security has gone from a nice to have to an absolute need to have. And Meraki can serve as the absolute backbone to that. And I'd be remiss if I didn't also say that Meraki is part of a dynamic security solution uh, that should also include Cisco Umbrella and Cisco uh, Duo as well. Uh, that full suite uh, brings to market the uh, the sassy solution that should be able to protect workers, whether they're in the office, VPNing in from home one day, completely remote or everywhere in between. That's going to fully cover everyone in a completely cloud managed security solution. So Meraki and, and Cisco, it's it's not just cybersecurity. And, you know, we kind of touched on these a little bit in the open. You mentioned, Amy, you mentioned smart spaces and safe spaces. And so let's talk about uh, that just a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're talking about how do we extend, like John was talking about, we now have on the Meraki side, these sensors, some that are environmental, whether that it's getting too hot, it's too cold. There was a case study for a YMCA that had some in their server room and it, there was a power outage in it. They got alerted immediately that the temperature rose. And so they were able to take care of it and save them a, a great deal of time and cost. They could get out and, and take care of it. But those sensors are also tied into for this YMCA because it's, you know, they're a little bit smaller cameras on all the playgrounds and in all the locations that they can then extend out to the parents to be able to check on their kids if they're there, as well as just check safety anywhere in the facility where they're at. But it's all managed and tied in so that they can also get alerts when things are happening Having those different sensors, depending on what the what the issue is, really gives a lot of flexibility, but gives even more information and proactive data, right? It'll give you those alerts when something's happening and can save a lot of time and energy. Safe environments is another area where extending some of the information that's internal to, say, a school. If there's a fire or an active shooter or something along those lines, being able to know where people are located in the, in the building. Um, and even being able to extend some of the inside cameras to local law enforcement who are outside, they can give them a temporary access so they can have eyes inside to see where people are. So there's, a, there's so many different solutions where this really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I love that Amy picked those two those two examples because both of them uh, incorporate both the DNA Sasis side and the Meraki side as well. One of our biggest campaigns over the last year on the Meraki side has been in, in the public sector space uh, where we were talking to school districts. Unfortunately, the, the times we're living in, the physical security uh, for a lot of these campuses, particularly high schools, is top of mind for everyone. Uh, they want to make sure that if there's an incident, that, that law enforcement can get in there immediately. So there was a massive federal grant that was available to any schools that were looking to upgrade their physical security to give law enforcement better access in the event of a horrific incident. And the pre-qualifier for being able to get that grant was being able to give the local police department a link to be able to jump into your camera system uh, uh, should a call come. Um, and Meraki was able to do that with, with every everyone who wanted to provide that type of security or engage in using that grant. So it, it's a huge play 
to, to make sure that these environments are safer, not only with the staff that's using them, but giving them access to, you know, heaven forbid, should they have to use law enforcement. So I want to dive into the Meraki IoT sensors a little bit more. You brought this up. You mentioned these sensors can detect water leaks, temperature, motion, and, and lots of other things. Can you break this down for us? Because I think this presents a new opportunity for a lot of different businesses in their selling. So we're used to selling computers, servers, switches, network devices, you know, managed services. This fits really well in with that play. Can you break down why a business might want to implement these for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say insurance first and foremost. I mean, if you've got a, a, a expensive uh, set of switches or uh, you've got a data center, anywhere that you've got really expensive gear that cannot afford a leak to happen on top of it, most people will wind up insuring gear like this. Being able to put a uh, temperature and humidity sensor in there to make sure that they're not being damaged by the environment, being able to put a, a water leak sensor in there. We also have a probe sensor. I'm sure you can see the application there where you, you stick it at any any food that is being stored in a freezer or stored in a refrigerated environment, and it allows you to, to make sure that your assets are not going to go to waste or, or get damaged. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. So, I mean, that that's the natural play. But to the channel community, I, I'll just re-emphasize the Meraki platform is is incredible on, on customer satisfaction. We're currently at a 94% renewal rate uh, with our licenses. People who use Meraki love it. Uh, if you add a third-party API to that, the, the renewal rate is north of 99%. And some of the best stats I have out there is that uh, 59% of, of customers wind up purchasing, first-time customers to Meraki wind up purchasing additional Meraki gear within 12 months. And the 24-month average uh, amount purchased is 3.3 times the original purchase price of their Meraki gear, which means that the more people interact with Meraki, the more they go, this is great. This is easy. I want to get more devices on this dashboard so I can free up more time. So in the context of, of how this is going to help people, particularly on the IoT side, for lack of a better phrase, I, I think sometimes the sensors are like a Meraki gateway drug. <laughs> it's like, hey, you've got a data center, you've got switches in there, get some sensors in there, let's protect that gear. That's a no-brainer. They are not very expensive. But more importantly, let's get you interacting with the Meraki dashboard uh, so you can see what all of our 4 million other customer networks are seeing and adding to every day and turning that into a full-fledged networking customer that you can provide better services to. And it definitely gives our partners that are, our Meraki partners that are already selling into customers, it gives them more stickiness, right? Like it gives them more opportunity to get ingrained, especially in critical business functions of their customers um, and really expand into other areas, right? And you're not having to add in a new management console or, you know, it's all still coming already into Meraki makes it a whole lot easier. And that's, you know, that's why people like Meraki is it's the easy button, right? Like it's a whole lot easier and you can just continue to expand out what you're already working on with your customers. So a whole new opportunity for them as well. And especially some of the, the applications like retail is a great one where it may be not just be sensors, but it's, there's applications that tie in through third-party applications that utilize all the data that's coming in from the cameras. So I, whether it's trying to understand what displays in the, in the environment, the retail environment are getting the most traffic where their customers are going into in, in a store, being able to provide updates on customers' programs where they get you know rewards or rebates, where it automatically sends information to their preferred customers when they come into the office, I mean, the office, the store, or even tying into digital media signage, right? And what's going to be on there. So there's so many different opportunities to really just expand and get ingrained with customers with this. And then the really smart one, our partners right now are going out and building some of these app third-party applications if they have a good niche. And that intellectual property is yielding really good revenue for them as well. Yeah. So I imagine this opens up a lot of opportunity for analytics data yeah. coming into the partners then as well. Absolutely. 
Oh yeah, and I, I was going to touch on that right away as well. One of you know, to, to Amy's point, being able to I think retail is just that perfect example. Uh, being able to monitor those people coming in. One of our our largest API partners is called Every Angle, and they track not only people counting, which Meraki does out of the box, uh, but they track uh, the age of people walking in, whether they're repeat visitors, what their gender is, where they're going throughout the store, as well as customer sentiment. It's it's tracking their faces and seeing. Are, are they enjoying being in this store? Did they come in unhappy and leave happy? Did they have the opposite effect? These insights are, are huge in that you're no longer just selling surveillance cameras. You, you, you're selling a, a customer experience solution, a deeper understanding of someone's customers. And by the way, if you were just selling cameras, you know, as Amy mentioned, being able to offer more services to your customer to better entrench you into that account, to be that one-stop IT and facilities management go to as a partner uh, is hugely, hugely profitable for the partners that are able to engage in both. The total addressable markets for cameras in the United States is $12 billion uh, or 31.5% larger, not $12 billion total, but larger than the entire market for routing and switching. Uh, so if you're not selling cameras into your customer, I promise you they're buying them. And I promise you, you're leaving a, a lot of services that you can provide them on the table and a lot of revenue and margin for your company as well. My key takeaway there is I really need to start paying attention to my facial expressions at the mall. <laughs> Right. Don't 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 put one of those in your office, Devin. Yeah, uh, definitely not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you guys both kind of mentioned a little bit about DNA spaces. And so as we're talking about sensors and we're talking about the analytics side and, and kind of putting these components together, let's talk about DNA spaces specifically for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So DNA spaces, uh, I mean, I can give it to you from the, the Meraki perspective, and then, you know, Amy can expand upon some of the other things they're doing there. Um, if, if you haven't had a chance, I highly recommend uh, that you go on our website and have a look at what we've done with Penn Station. Uh, that's like our model DNA spaces office. Uh, the office that we use in Chicago at Cisco is DNA spaces as well. But it essentially allows you to, to control dang near everything in your office environment from when and where the lights turn on to when and where the Wi-Fi turns on to who has access to what area. I mean, you name it, uh, DNA Spaces is going to uh, allow you to, to manage it and control it on a single dashboard. Um, and that's what I love about it because, you know, Meraki, we're always a single pane of glass and that's amazing for management. Uh, DNA Spaces does for facilities management what Meraki does for networking management. I mean, it's it, it not only gives you complete control over all these things, uh, but it does it in a in a insanely user friendly interface, a graphical user interface in which you're you're selecting the settings that you want from drop down menu instead of putting command line interface code in. Uh, it makes it very easy to operate with a lean staff. Uh, it makes it very easy to operate with a staff that doesn't have tons of technical or facilities know how. And the Meraki IoT uh, devices are just a small piece of, of the type of data that gets brought in that, that allows you to have actionable insights. And Amy, did, did you want to touch on anything from the Cisco side? Oh, I was going to say it's, it's the same on the Cisco same side. Thing. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing. And the other thing just to kind of point out is we are seeing, you, you hear, it used to be you either had a Cisco solution or a Meraki solution. We are seeing so much more overlap now and integration between the two platforms, which I know a lot of our partners have been asking for for a very long time. And we've been super excited that we're seeing that now and being able to manage Cisco devices on Rocky systems and vice versa. So just um, kind of interesting that now we're talking about all of these things together and, and the two uh, sides working very, very closely together and see. Yeah, I mean, the, the integration, I'll give an example. Like on the Meraki side, we've got the temperature and humidity sensors. And we have a, a piece just out of the box, no extra integration, out of the box with the temperature and humidity sensors that are going to give you graphical insights into how you can save energy in your environment. When you can look at how many people are in a room and, and when it's really hot outside and when it costs a lot to get it all the way down to 68 or whatever you want your office at, just, just some insights that can be helpful. That's really cool. I mean, that's like what my what my Nest thermostat does at home. It's pretty neat. DNA Spaces takes those insights, adds about 
3x the number of insights and gives you options to actually put them in place. If they go, hey, this is our recommended energy regimen. This is our, our recommended policy for when you should heat the office up, when you should cool it down, what areas you should focus on uh, with, with things like lighting and HVAC. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Okay, go ahead and put those insights into action. On the, on the DNA spaces portal. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, Meraki, I think uh, the, the biggest um, contribution that we have to that uh, is the insights. And then watching those insights be put into action on a DNA spaces platform is really cool on, this, on the Meraki side. So I think it's the coolest uh, integration that, that we've done uh, to date uh, between Meraki and, and Cisco. Very cool. So Amy and John, I want to hear, so with this question, I want to hear from both of you. Uh, one of the things we like to discuss is where are you seeing product successes? So are there specific market verticals that Meraki's seeing great growth in that partners might not be taking advantage of? And if so, what are those and and how do we take advantage of that? Amy, we can start with you. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we've touched on a, a couple of them already. And I would definitely say on some of the more specific, because we can have, especially with some of the third-party applications and API integrations, such specific solutions for certain markets like retail, like education, not only in K through 12, but in a lot of colleges are absolutely taking advantage of the fact that everybody on campus needs Wi-Fi as well as security, the physical security piece, right? So it's the, it's one of those things where we've got the network security covered, but we also can extend that out to the physical security. So education has been huge. Retail, again, because of some of the very specific applications that have been built around the Rocky solution that leverages the cameras, the sensors, et cetera. And it's correlating that data, right? And provide making it actionable versus just, you know, compiling a lot of data. It's those insights that John mentioned as well. And then public sector, right? Where there is a lot of funding to that our partners can take advantage of, right? Like, let's go find the, we're always looking for where's the budget. There's a ton of funding available for very specific uh, use cases that the Meraki solutions address. So we're seeing a lot of really good movement in those areas as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Sorry, go ahead, Amy. And actually, let me, I do want to, sorry. <laughs> small business is a huge, I know, because this is focused on small business. That is absolutely a huge area where we're seeing it, especially if there's small, small, you know, location areas where they don't have as many resources or they maybe have a multiple locations. It just makes it a whole lot easier for, for companies that have very lean IT staffs or very limited IT resources. The Meraki solution is, is really, really a great fit. Perfect. Yeah, I'll essentially echo that, Amy. I, it, public sector is huge. Uh, when, when it comes to public sector, I, I, say, I always say follow the money. And there is a ton of funding right now. We talked about it earlier, safer schools. We provide everything that, that is needed for that so that, that schools have access to that funding. And it's, it's, an, absolute, it's an unfortunately necessary uh, thing that each school is going to have to have. So it's, it's a great service to sell. It's, it's fully funded by the government as a key priority. And, it, and it's a service that Meraki can provide better than just about anyone. Small business, again, that's some of the talking <laughs> lines I usually do on that uh, is, is that, uh, you know, the type of insights you get on your customers by putting Meraki IoT in, in, in your small, retail soap shop on Main Street, you know, it, it was only available to like corporations like Walmart 15 years ago because they had people staring at cameras all day to get the insights. Everyone has that now. We, we've democratized the access to that type of data so that you can get insane amount of insights on every customer and employee that walks into your environment um, and actually put those into action in a meaningful way. And then a, a, third, a third piece is kind of agnostic to whether you're public or private. I would be talking to customers you, you know uh, that have high value property that they're looking to protect. Now, the natural play there is, of course, data centers or, or, or rack rooms, any, anywhere you've got gear that is this specific to IT. But think, think bigger than that, I would encourage folks. I, I know on the public sector side, we had a uh, the, the Marmot Library Network in, in, in Grand Junction, Colorado. This was a natural Meraki play because it was a staff of six employees and they had 35 locations that they were trying to manage. That's a lot. Being able to manage all of those remotely from a cloud-managed dashboard, natural play. But what wound up being one of the best selling points to them was the ability of the empty sensors to protect 
a lot of their artifacts. So this was a library that stored uh, tons of priceless Old West artifacts from both the cowboy era and the, the, the Native American artifacts and pieces of art. They, they just had a tons of that uh, that is priceless art and history uh, that cannot be lost. And it also can't be in a room that gets too humid and it can't ever get wet and all of these things um, that they are constantly worried about with six employees across 35 locations. Meraki wound up being an incredible play for that because they can now completely monitor that at all their locations. They can set alerts up to to notify someone local to, to fix something if it's going wrong or move something if it's in a, an area that, that, that is risky. Uh, and they actually charted out between the security of their of their high value assets or their priceless assets, I, I would say, and the amount of time that they spent shuttling their IT staff from location to location to, to fix breaks, that they were going to save uh, over a million dollar in dedicated payroll over the next couple of years. So anyone that has a lean IT staff, always a natural play, but also think about people that have just assets that they are really sensitive about, that are either really expensive or in some cases, priceless. And that can be a fantastic play. I was going to say to that point, we've seen we've seen healthcare utilize this as well, where like certain medicines or blood has to be kept at a certain temperature. And so they need to be alerted if it goes above or below that threshold so that, you know, you don't ruin a whole Absolutely. You know, refrigerator full of blood, right? Or whatever it is. So it's, it's just whatever critical acts, asset needs to be protected as well. Protected in many senses, because one of the one of the larger deals I actually also worked on as well was a was a series of uh, AIDS clinics in uh, in Alabama, and they had a pretty lean staff, and they used Meraki cameras for security, uh, and they were having what they called inventory issues with their pharmaceutical department, <laughs> uh, which yes. is to say, you know, they got a lot of pretty heavy painkillers when they deal with those type of illnesses, and it was going missing. Uh, they were able to put uh, a cameras in place that set up motion alerts uh, that that let them know anytime someone who was not the pharmacist that was supposed to be in that area was going in that area at all hours of the night. And uh, lo and behold, those issues abated pretty pretty quickly after they, they were able to put those in place. So any assets whatsoever you're trying to secure, whether it's security from theft or security from changes in temperature or security from damage, these, these sensors are an absolute no-brainers to help your customer. Well, and we've kind of breezed over a few times just by mentioning the Meraki dashboard, but let's talk about management for just a moment because, and as you just alluded to in in the one instance, you know, 35 locations and six people, how easy and effective is it really to manage the Meraki infrastructure and all of these devices? Very. I mean, <laughs> if I had to do it in a word, very. I would say that, uh, you know, to that, first and foremost, the, the type of sales we do on the Meraki side is is absolutely centered around getting the, the product in front of people. We don't do any kind of spin or question-based manipulative selling cycles. Our, our sales cycle is called see, try, buy. Our whole point on the sales side is to get the product in front of a customer, see it with a demo, show them how easy it is, try, get a trial out to them get them interacting with the product, get it tested in their environment, and that usually leads to a purchase. That is the product speaking for itself. So I cannot I cannot speak enough uh, for how that management platform has helped so many people and put so many man hours back into their day. Uh, now, as it relates to IoT, we've actually, we've got the cameras on the dashboard and they're great. And it's very easy to manage them if you're a network manager. Uh, but one of the things that we learned, I think in the first couple of years of having the cameras out there, that, that quite often... Uh, The folks that are consuming the cameras and monitoring the cameras are not in the network room. Their facilities management or their security management. And number one, you don't want them to accidentally reconfigure a switch. (laughs) But but number two, that dashboard that all of our network managers know and love uh, is not necessarily the most intuitive for someone who's just consuming a security product. Uh, So we've actually uh, released a Meraki Vision portal. Uh, which is just cameras and sensors. It is security focused. It's modeled after uh, many of the other uh, highly successful uh, camera viewing softwares out there. And it's made to be just absolutely easiest to, to retrieve any any type of footage uh, that, that you would need to um, and to look at any cameras that you want. Uh, now, we've gone a step further with that vision portal. You can watch it on either of them, but we've noticed that this is great and people love that. 
But more and more people are asking to consume these security products mobily. They want it on tablets so they can walk around with. They want it on their phone so that they can set it and forget it. But if an alert comes, I want to see that video right now. And so we've actually doubled down on that Meraki Vision portal and made dang near all of those feature sets available on the application experience and focused on the application consumption uh, as the primary form of consumption for the for the video footage, because right? that's just us meeting our customers where they're truly at. So aside from having it all on one pane of glass to configure it, to put it together, to make sure it's connected, that's music to an IT manager's ears. But if if once it's set up and it's and it's connected and it's ready to go, the IT manager takes a step back and hands it off to the security personnel, do know that we've got a platform for them too that's just built around consumption and ease of use. So it's great and and, and getting better with each passing month here. And I would recommend to anybody that's interested or just wants to learn more about it to reach out to the Ingram team. They do those demos day in, day out of the dashboard. And it's it, like John said, it's one of those, once you see it, you can understand, yep, okay, I get it. This this is, is really easy. So definitely, if anybody's interested, reach out to the Ingram team. Yeah, and the, and the Ingram team actually has the unique uh, ability to to do often what the Meraki team cannot, which is pair it with a lot of Cisco technology. So they can put together a full DNA smart spaces demo that we've been talking about. I can show you the cameras all day. Ingram can build you an environment that incorporates both of them together um, and let you click around with it on your own. So this is really working with the, the best distributor in the business if you want to see how it all comes together. Yeah, that's good to know. I always like to see and try before I buy. So that that resonates pretty well. John and Amy, I've got uh, my infamous wrap-up question. So we're getting close to the end. One of these days you're going to forget. But I want to hear from both of you. So uh, yeah, right. Uh, where do you see technology going in the next year? This can be with anything. It doesn't have to be specific to, to Cisco products or Meraki products. But if it is, that's fine. Your bosses will probably be very happy about that. So anyway, John, let's kick it off with you on, on that question. Yeah. So last time we, we asked that question was about a year ago, and I was saying security, security, security. And, and I think if you've just been passively watching the news, I was right about that prediction because that's top of mind for everyone. I'll say this. I, about a month ago, a, a Gartner released a report that said that uh, uh, by 2025, uh, 50% of uh, IT processes will be cloud managed. 50%. And that includes cloud managed networking, cloud managed cameras, That, but it also includes AWS or Azure as, as people are moving a lot of their business app, uh, critical applications to the cloud. I would say that that's where the industry is clearly going. Meet the customers where they're at. Have that conversation with them. Have that conversation of how you can put together a hybrid campus, how you can start moving some of your essential services and your business critical motions to the cloud, because if you're not having that conversation, someone else is going to be having that conversation with them. Um, and if that's if that's the kind of conversation you, you're, you're looking for, and it should be, there's no better partner out there than Cisco Meraki for, for a cloud managed approach. Yeah, I would echo the security, right? That everything <laughs> needs to be secured, especially now that it's moving to the cloud more. But what we're seeing, there's probably two things I would highlight, and that is Managed services, I probably don't have very many conversations right now that don't include managed services in some way, shape, or form. And then security should be part of all those conversations as well. Security should be part of every conversation. Does not matter what we're talking about, like security, security, security. And then a lot of it's about user experience. We're get we're seeing a lot more about, you know, all these analytics that people are asking for is all about the user experience, whether it's the application or if it's you know, there's a lot about hybrid work, being able to have the same ex user experience, whether you're at home or the office or somewhere in between. There's a huge focus on just making sure that that experience is the best and then how to entice people to come into the office or maybe entice them not to be in the office, whatever that might be, right? Like, what is it that they're trying to do and spend? Uh, we've, we're seeing a lot of companies spending a lot of time on retaining employees and attracting employees. As, you know, there was so much shift in movement over the last couple of years of how do we make that experience good for our employees so that they want to stick around and, and uh, stay with the company. So those would be what I, what we're seeing. Awesome. Well, Amy, John, on behalf of Devin and, and myself, thank you guys for taking some time this afternoon to chat with us. Where can folks learn either a little bit more about you individually or about Cisco or Meraki? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, here's what I'll say. If, you, if you're looking to uh, jumpstart your Meraki practice, we're always happy to talk. Uh, reach out to Amy or, or myself. We can be found on the Cisco side. I'm Jay Paddock at Cisco. But what I'll say, engage with the Ingram Micro Cisco team. Uh, Michelle Edmonds runs the, the team over there, and she's, she's just got a really incredible uh, team put together that can, that can help you if you're just new to networking and wanting to get started to complete networking expert and you just need a full-fledged team to support you, they've got it all. Uh, I've got Kevin Wills over there running the Meraki team as well. Either one of them is a great first contact to engage with uh, to say, this is where we'd like to be. Uh, what do we got to do to get there so that we can start offering our customer these solutions? Yeah, 100% echo that. The Ingram team is amazing. They can help with pre-sales, helping jump on calls, doing demos, educating, enabling, not only from a technology perspective, but also uh, a Cisco partnership perspective, right? How to get the right certifications or partner levels. They're absolutely amazing on helping our partners do that. And then as well, just, you know, the additional education when it comes to either new solutions or new products or new technologies, they're fantastic. All right. Thank you guys. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in to another episode of B2B Tech Talks as the Gears Turn Edition. You can access this episode and many others directly from the Xvantage website or whatever your favorite podcast platform is. You've been listening to As the Gears Turn, a series brought to you by B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. This episode was sponsored by Ingram Micro's SMB Alliance. B2B Tech Talk is a joint production between Sweetfish Media and Ingram Micro. 